When most people think of the dark and strange side of the internet, they think of the deep web. The reality is, you can find just as many weird corners on the clear web, if not more. True spectacles of human nature are on display on the mainstream side of the web. The internet is full of strange and dark discoveries. All you have to do is go to the right places to find them. There's a term called internet archaeology. The idea is to find relics of the past online. This can be anything that once had an online presence, but is now hidden within the many walls of the internet. This can also refer to lost media, but that's not exactly where we're starting our search. This is where we'll be starting our search, with websites that have been mostly lost to time. Our first find is this website called timecube.com. Timecube is a theory that was created by a man by the name of Gene Ray. He put forth the belief that the Earth goes through four simultaneous 24-hour days in a single day. This comes from a man that claims to be the wisest man on the Earth and also a god in some cases. Gene created the website timecube.com in 1997 and used it to spread his beliefs and conspiracies about the world. He believed that the world's scientists were spreading lies and also refusing to acknowledge his theories. He even went as far as claiming that he offered any professor or scientist $10,000 to disprove his theories but no one ever tried, lending validity in his mind. The website was last updated in 2005 before it sat untouched until 2016. The website was shut down that year and was almost gone from the internet entirely, but it was saved thanks to the Wayback Machine and is now back up in all its strange glory. This is the website and it looks very similar to how it would have looked in 1997. The site consists almost entirely of rambling texts about how the world is lying and how educated adults are wrong. There's a few references to belly buttons and mothers, but most of it revolves around how stupid people are for not believing his theory. A lot of this man's ramblings are about how the cube relates to humans, the earth, and disproves theistic gods. In fact, a lot of the ramblings are against religion and proving them wrong. This is because he believes his time cube theory already disproves the existence of a god and points to the inability of modern science to teach the right things to the future of the world, the children. He wasn't just anti-religion though. He was specifically anti-Semitic, as he had several things to say about the Jewish people and Christians. Not only that, but he was racist, sexist, and homophobic. All these mentions were removed in the updated site that can be explored today, but are still intact in the Wayback Machine version. His biggest claim was that the US is being controlled by different race groups at different times, saying that it started with Native Americans, then white Europeans, then African Americans, and then Asians. He claims that each group will have control over the US for some reason, which has nothing to really do with his cube theory. Though maybe it has everything to do with it, as a lot of the ramblings seem to lead to other sections without warning. Continuing through the site, you'll see that he believes that the world is separated into differing polar opposites. Men and women, masculinity, and femininity. If they came together, they would cancel each other out, according to him. Because he says the math told him so. Math that he doesn't really show. Just alludes to. The website is mostly just his rants about the time cube theory. One that equates to being the true meaning of life. This kind of conspiracy was something you'd stumble upon online back in the day and just continue on with your day. But now it's a true piece of internet history. The basic design of the website is something that comes straight from its era. The background is entirely made up of graphing paper that is warping at certain sections. The text is bold Times New Roman font that sits in the center of the page. The colors and placement of the images and links all represent their era. There's even a few primitive GIFs from the 90s, just alongside the text blocks. The formatting, or lack thereof, of many of the paragraphs really lends the credence of reading someone's wild rambling thoughts. Then at the bottom of the page, you are presented with links to other parts of the website. These only exist on the Wayback Machine version. The first one asks a question, are you Jewish? Which leads to a red screen before loading into a quote from the creator of the site where he quotes himself. A link below that is called the power above God and is another quote. This one says that there is a power above God and that is the nature of his theory. He calls it the ineffable truth. The final words on this page are, no genius has the wisdom of a cubic. Another link takes you to a clock face that goes to 16. He says that all clock faces are wrong. Clearly he wants us to interpret this as how the clock should be. There's no text to interpret this clock and the context clues are limited here. That's really all there is to see on this website. There's a section that goes over how many website hits it received, which was around 274 million before they stopped counting. This is really only the beginning of the strange personal websites that individuals used to run back in the day. Gene passed away in 2015 at the age of 87. He left behind this strange website with very convoluted theories and some questionable belief systems as well as some general bigotry. 
Even if this theory was a little out there, at least it provided entertainment for those that explored the web back in the 90s. A true relic of the past, where people would create personal websites instead of using social media. It's really the only place where these kinds of wild theories still exist. Other corners of the internet don't really show this raw side to a person with no moderation. The website's design is lacking but charming in a way. It likely takes anyone back to its era. Timecube.com will likely live on for a while before fading further into obscurity. A piece of the internet that disturbingly is still accessible today is the Heaven's Gate website. This website belongs to a cult by the same name. Before we move on to the site, we should probably talk about the cult a little bit. In 1974, two people came together to found a new religious movement. These two were named Bonnie Nettles and Marshall Applewhite, but within the cult they were called T and Doe. They began spreading their religion which has been described as a mixture of Christian millennialism, New Age, and weirdly enough, UFOlogy. By 1976, they had recruited around two dozen members to their group, which is when they stopped most of their recruiting and took on an almost hermetic lifestyle. The main belief that members of Heaven's Gate looked to was the idea that they would someday become extraterrestrial beings that would be the next level of the human race. They would become immortal and eventually make their way to heaven. This was the core belief of the cult and one that people seemed eager to believe. Eventually, one of the leaders of the cult, Nettie, would pass away due to cancer. This caused some wavering in the beliefs of a few. This is when Applewhite explained that she had simply ascended and in order to do so, they would have to leave their human bodies behind. This was seen as a shedding of a cocoon of sorts. So the only way to the next level, or heaven, was to die and leave your vessel behind. This reasoning was enough for the members to quell their fears. They would continue in their cult activities, some of which were taking on more of the UFOlogy side than the Christian one. This would all come to a head in 1997 when the 39 members of the cult, including Applewhite, would commit mass ascension together. The ascension was done to coincide with the Halley Comet passing over the Earth. They believed they would be ascended to a spaceship that was following closely behind the comet. The bodies of those ascended were discovered when a former member of the group showed up at the house. He only came because they had sent him a letter. He called the police and they found that every member had conducted a sort of ritual before ascending. Bags were found over almost all the members' heads. They had taken phenobarbital mixed with applesauce or pudding and chased it with vodka before lying in bed to complete their ascension. This event made the news and was seen as a sign that the UFO cult was gone. That leaves this website. The Heaven's Gate website was used as a recruiting tool for the cult and as a place to keep information. The website was actually updated the same day that the mass ascension took place. The title had changed to Haley Bop, the name of the comet, with a message about what had just transpired. Quote, whether Haley Bop has a companion or not is irrelevant from our perspective. However, its arrival is joyously very significant to us at Heaven's Gate. The joy is that our older member in the evolutionary level above human, the Kingdom of Heaven, has made it clear to us that Haley Bop's approach is the marker we've been waiting for. The time for the arrival of the spacecraft from the level above human to take us home to their world. In the literal heavens. Our 22 years of classroom here on planet Earth is finally coming to conclusion graduation from the human evolutionary level. We are happily prepared to leave this world and go with T's crew. If you study the material on this website, you will hopefully understand our joy and what our purpose here on Earth has been. You may even find your boarding pass to leave with us during this brief window. We are so very thankful that we have been recipients of this opportunity to prepare for membership in their kingdom and to experience their boundless caring and nurturing. According to Wikipedia, there were two members that were told not to ascend with everyone else, and said they were told to update the website and keep it updated after they were gone. It was never stated beyond that what the purpose of their mission was, but it can be assumed that they wanted others to eventually find the site and follow in their cult's footsteps. One line is what really gets to me though. You may even find your boarding pass to leave with us during this brief window. They were asking others to follow suit with the ascension, during the time frame when the site was updated an invitation to follow them into the darkness of death. Now we can continue exploring the website. This is what it looks like now, and what it looked like back in 1997. The Heaven's Gate logo is large on the right, and is an image on top of the starry background. A red alert sits at the top along with where their message resides below the logo. Further down you'll find a series of links. The first link leads to an intro for the cult, as well as an excerpt from their book, which you can also find on the website. This one reads, 2000 years ago, a crew of members of the Kingdom of Heaven, who are responsible for nurturing gardens, determined that a percentage of the human plants of the present civilization of this garden, Earth, 
had developed enough that some of those bodies might be ready to be used as containers for soul deposits. Upon instruction, a member of the Kingdom of Heaven then left behind his body in that next level. Similar to putting it in a closet like a suit of clothes that doesn't need to be worn for a while. Came to Earth and moved into, or incarnated into, an adult human body, or vehicle, that had been prepped for this particular task. The body that was chosen was called Jesus. The member of the Kingdom of Heaven who was instructed to incarnate into the body did so at his father's, or older member's, instruction. He moved into, or took over, that body when it was 29 or 30 years old, at the time referred to as the Baptism of John the Baptist. The incarnating event was depicted as the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, Luke 3.22. That body, named Jesus, was tagged in its formative period to the receptacle of the next level representative. And even just that tagging gave that vehicle some unique awareness of its coming purpose. Essentially what they're saying is that humans were put on earth to be nurtured so that one day they could die and join the next level, as they called it. They even claim that Jesus was the first member of their order to do such a thing, with specific sections of the Bible being quoted here. This is also where they would get their nickname of the UFO cult, as a lot of their writings and beliefs would be based on extraterrestrials and the space around them. They also believe that select members would come down and be the ones to allow others to follow them to heaven. Most of the symbols they use on their website revolve entirely around space. From the starry background to the comet flying above. In their next link, it kind of shows more of what the cult believed. Here they have a statement by an ET. The claim they make here is that the two oldest members were actually extraterrestrials that were inhabiting these bodies. Reading through the rest of this page is just more of the same, claiming that they are aliens that came to Earth to nurture others who would be like them even going as far as to say that these individuals have been picked from birth and they were just now ready to join them. There's some pretty dark stuff to sift through here, especially if you have the full story of what they would eventually do. Nurturing souls to take with them sounds more like tricking others into following them into their deaths. Continuing through this site, you can find the entire book including a copyright that places it in 1996. The entire book is a bit of a read, but it's all there if you want to check it out. Not that you'd learn much other than the cult's belief systems. Finally, at the bottom of this page are two important links. One is the cult's opposition to taking one's life, and the other is essentially a final note. Firstly, they say that taking one's own life is to turn away from the next level, or heaven. Which is kind of strange, since in the very next line it says that in order to ascend, you must leave your body behind by your own means. Leaving that as it was, there's also this page to look at. It's the Heaven's Gate Away Team's Ascension Note. This tells you everything that went down that day. How it was all orchestrated and carried out. They claim that you can't get into the kingdom of heaven through being a good person and dying of natural causes. Instead, you need to have that life taken by a member of the highest level, which consisted of the cult leaders only. The reality of this website's continued existence is a bit baffling. The reason it exists can't fully be determined, but it has been speculated that it was a recruitment tool, as I mentioned before. Even so, the website seems to have failed its purpose as the movement has all but died out. When the members died that day, they took the religion with them. All that's left is this relic of a website. A truly dark piece of human history and now, a dark piece of the internet. One that anyone can enter, no need to visit the deep web. And to make it all that much darker, there are also tapes of the events of that day. The transcripts of which you can find at the bottom of the website. Read at your own discretion. In 1995, a game was released that would be the first of its kind. It was called Active Worlds, and was something completely unheard of at the time. It was a fully 3D chat room where users could interact in a virtual world using an avatar that represented who they were. The world was built of fully 3D models and worlds to explore. It also allowed users to create their own worlds to share with others. The website lost a lot of steam and quickly faded into obscurity, though it was never truly dead. The game, 28 years later, is still up and running. It's not something that many games or chat rooms from that time period can claim. Yet, here it is. Active Worlds, home of the 3D internet. A website that is as basic as it can be. In fact, it's so basic that the banner gives you zero idea of what this game might actually be. In the corner it says Active Worlds, build 3D, play, chat. This sits at the opposite side of the start, services, community resources, and help tabs. In the services tab, you can actually buy space to build your own worlds. You essentially rent the space and it can do whatever you want with it. 
The pricing is a bit more than I expected. $32 a year gets you the smallest amount of space with 40,000 meters of 3D space to customize. The highest is at $990 a year for 4 million square meters of space. You can also purchase system development kits which can be used for creating your own various pieces of the game. It's actually more than I was expecting when I went to the website. The image is painted as a fully 3D game with endless opportunities, like a Roblox or Minecraft, just from a bygone era of the internet. The only link that we actually care about though is the download one. The downloads actually have multiple versions which account for what you have in your computer. It's kind of crazy that this website is even working at all. Let's download and see what this game chat room hybrid is really like. The download will take some time, but not too long. Once downloaded, you'll need an account to access the game. That's easily done and now you're loaded into the world. You pick an avatar and are free to explore from there. For the era this was released, it's almost impressive. 3D objects are everywhere, but most of them have this dated look to them. It very much reminds me of old school RuneScape and other browser based games from the early 2000s. There's also a flair of Gaia Online with how you are able to interact with others and essentially treat it like a fully 3D chat room. The game's controls aren't great. You move with the arrow keys and turning is a massive hassle. Everything feels slow from the movement of the camera to the movement of your character. Even the loading of the worlds is incredibly slow, with assets needing to be loaded before you can fully explore any of the worlds. Speaking of the worlds, there are 213 for you to explore, but you don't need to go far to see what the game has to offer. Just in the starting world, Alpha World, you can see all sorts of creations. Walking around for a bit will lead you to some interesting locations. The first I checked out was the Aquarium, which has some 3D models of fish swimming around endlessly in their tanks. The fish variety was rather minimal as well, with only dolphins and a single jellyfish. I also checked out the water parks, but was pretty underwhelmed by it. There really wasn't much to see. I started to explore the empty streets of the main hub of Active Worlds and couldn't help but feel something familiar. Everything felt so eerie and out of place. There were places for people to hang out, but not a single soul in sight. It was just me and the empty builds of a world that had taken time for someone to create. Every step, I felt like I was being followed and watched, but every time I looked, there was no one there. Empty and lifeless was all that I imagined as I kept walking down the streets. The sound design is so uncanny that it didn't really pull me in, and instead made me feel uneasy. The first world I decided to jump into was called Mythopia. It said that there was someone else on the server with me, but I never encountered anyone there. Loading of the assets took forever, but once I was able to explore, I was kind of shocked at the detail of this world. There was music, sound effects, and plenty of places to explore. I found a train off to the side, which I wasn't expecting to work which makes me right since it didn't seem to do anything. Though I'm not too familiar with how this game works, so it could have functioned and I just didn't know how to make it run. I started walking into the wilderness and found a room full of teleports. Essentially, people can create links to other parts of the world and place them on the map. You can interact with them to be brought to new places or even get links to websites not part of the game. I clicked one of the links and was sent to a Victorian village. This area took a second to load as well. There were thousands of assets used to create this little town which was pretty impressive for what it was. These streets, as impressive as they were, turned out to be just as empty as the rest of the places I'd seen so far. Tall buildings with signs that claimed they were for something, but looking in the windows showed that they held nothing. The street lamps had candles in them, but it was the middle of the day, so they provided no ambiance. I continued through those streets with no sound to accompany me. It was getting more and more lonesome and unnerving, like I was in an unfinished place, where others weren't supposed to be. My first interaction with another user was when I went to their Christmas themed world that was still under construction. That's right, people are still in this game building things. They asked how I was and I asked where I was. They explained that this world belongs to another user named Lady Pippin, who apparently had builders that helped her create things. Following this topic, I continued asking about who Lady Pippin was and her importance to active worlds. This is when I found out that she had been a user and builder since 1999. She built some of the most impressive builds that the game had to offer. The user sent me some links and I was free to explore her other worlds, which I assumed would be a great place to get some insight into this game. And I was right. This is her crowning achievement. It's called Pippinville. It was named after her original username, so she might have changed it by now. When you load into her world, you are brought to Pippinville, Ground Zero, a starting point with links to every other part of her build. I should also specify that Pippinville isn't its own world. It's actually just a small piece of Alpha World, where the game starts you. This means that there are possibly more towns and areas to explore in just this one world. I didn't have time for more exploration, or I would have tried to explore the entirety of Alpha World. Let's just look at what Pippinville has to offer. The museum has links to many different builds, all created by Lady Pippin, 
as far as I'm aware. Some of them, like this Exploratorium, have music that plays when you enter it. Another batch of assets loaded, and I could see different locations that I could teleport to. Some had interesting significance, and others were just Lady Pippin's house. There was this art museum full of art from Lady Pippin, and most likely others. Some of the art is done with paints, and others with pencil. There's also this repeating sound of nature in the background that doesn't feel very comforting, and more like I'm trapped in this world, as it repeats on a loop over and over again. That's kind of the overall vibe of the game. These worlds are full of things you might see in another video game, but they all lack life. They are more Uncanny Valley than Stardew Valley. It's all lacking definition or reason, more abstract art than anything else. I went back to Lady Pippin's museum and found this. Yeah, they have a memorial for 9-11 built into the server. Clicking on it, it's kind of a dystopian place. It's a real memorial to the events that transpired that day, but it all feels wrong somehow. There are images of the Twin Towers that day, as well as images of rescuers and volunteers. There are American flags everywhere, including a few at half-mast. There are quotes here as well, but I'm not sure from whom. I spent a little more time walking around the memorial before heading back to the museum. There was a Halloween area that I checked out next. Far from Halloween related, really. It was set in a dark box since the sky couldn't be modified. There's a tall gray building in the center, but it's mostly empty inside. The real attraction to this area is the graveyard in the back. Most of the gravestones appear to have funny phrases on them. Nothing too creepy, except for this guy. I found him hiding in the trees. I'm not sure what his deal is, but he surely jump scared me when I first saw him. No matter where I explored, his gaze never stopped following me. Possibly one of the darkest areas I went was this memorial area for real people. I think they might have been either friends of Lady Pippin or part of the community. Here you can see images of the users along with their days of passing. It's just so strange to see a full memorial in a game like this. There's also at least a dozen people listed here. Which makes me wonder how so many of the users in this community have passed. I guess 28 years is a long time. Leaving that main memorial area, I came upon these labyrinths of memorials. Some of them took up more space than some of the houses I explored. There was another flag at half-mast for these individuals. I was ready to leave this area, but I wasn't quite done exploring the game yet. I ended up in this art museum with some eerie music in the background. I wasn't able to move for some reason, at least not faster than a crawl. This place was giving off the theater creepy Basta vibes. I didn't stay long. I was teleported to a world based on Godzilla. With so much New York references, I figured it must have been based on the Godzilla 2000 movie, a movie which I loved as a child and haven't seen since. The world has this droning sound in the background, probably supposed to reference the sounds of Godzilla's footsteps. There's also carnage almost everywhere with cars and fires littering the roads. A few helicopters can be seen and heard flying around the city. I never did find Godzilla, and I probably needed to do a second look, but the world itself felt creepy with the sounds and design of it all. I got what I needed from this server, especially with this sound that started playing when I approached the outskirts of the world's border. I got sent back to the other world of the art museum and was finally able to move around. I walked for a bit and found myself at a teleporter. When I went through it, I was back in the Godzilla world, only it was now a prison. I was trapped between these tall buildings and some fleshy looking shapes. They were pixelated and gross. There was nowhere for me to go as I was trapped. I left the server and soon found a place called Heaven's Stairway. The first thing I was jump scared with was an ad for Peloton. There's a jukebox here that plays some radio station a radio station that only plays 80s music for some reason. The world has this funky vibe to it. 
The NPCs are all dancing and it appears to be celebrating the new year of 2023, so this server must have been updated at least at the start of this year. There were several interesting sights, but the most ominous was this spiral staircase in the center. I decided I needed to see where it took me. The climb took far longer than was necessary. It took a literal 5 minutes of walking with terrible controls in a circle to reach the top, which is kind of what I was expecting. It's a religious area, with quotes from the Bible and YouTube videos of readings to be watched. The area was strangely ominous, but I didn't stick around to see what else it was hiding. I went to a few other worlds with interesting locations and motifs, but nothing of major interest. There were two X-Files based worlds, there was a world based off Lord of the Rings which was made by Lady Pippin which just clicked in my head when I found it. All this is fine and slightly eerie, but only one world has something that felt raw and wrong. There's a world called Jesus' God TV. Let me just play the intro when you enter the world. Welcome to Jesus' is God TV. Yeah, this feels like the place I should be. The world is draped in this red silk background but looks almost like blood with how flat it is. The first thing to mention is that there were people here. A few people that I met while exploring and the man that ran the world. A man by the name of Saintly Mick. Saintly Mick welcomed us to his world and told us to explore. It felt like some kind of biblical torture room full of ads and verses every which way you turned. There were gifts, 3D objects that resembled angel wings, and a fire over Saintly Mick's head. I was stunned but intrigued. Even more so by the man behind this all, who had a YouTube channel as well as a website. He claimed to have been interested in 3D since 1999 and that led him to this creation. I wandered for a bit before talking to the man behind this world. I asked about the end times that he claimed we were in and he said that he had proof of it. It was in the Fellowship Hall, my next destination. There was this cathedral-like stone archway that led to the Fellowship Hall. Once I entered, I realized that I was certainly in for something. The walls were covered in crosses and mentions of Jesus everywhere. There were some generally interesting finds, but most of it was more the same. I also wasn't able to find any proof relating directly to the end times, just several mentions of tribulations and the horns that will end the world. There's also a lot of mentions of going to hell for different reasons. Oh, and a mention of COVID being the beginning of the end times. So I guess there was something here about them. Not that it proves anything. That's when I decided to check out the other floors, which all had varying levels of weirdness to them. The second floor was almost like a dance party. It was very odd. The third floor had a pool and a bunch of other clickable signs, one that took me to a maze that I definitely didn't finish going through. That was my experience with Active Worlds. There seems to be something here, something that keeps bringing people back to create and socialize, even though there was like a max of 13 people on when I was exploring. Most of the worlds were complete ghost towns with monuments built by those that had once been there. It was all unintentionally creepy, like I was exploring the remnants of a dead world, one that didn't really serve a purpose. Well, not anymore. Yet it still had visitors. It still has worlds. It still has a very, very small, but engaged community. If you're looking for a truly liminal experience, try out Active Worlds. I can't guarantee you'll have a good time, but you'll definitely have an experience. Thanks everyone for watching the video. Exploring the weirder and darker side of the internet has been a hobby of mine since I was a kid. There just always seems to be something hiding just around the corner. Most of these finds took a bit of digging to even find. I was amazed at how much of the old internet was still alive and accessible. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters, Victor Estrada, Ryoma, Bazingle, Icy Dice, and Nora Kingsley. Thank you to everyone for watching my content, and hope you all have a good night.